Hello friends and welcome to a replay analysis. This is a Crusader Archon game. We're going to be watching a position 5 hoodwink. I don't know what we're going to see. First time taking a look. Uh, I wanted to take a moment real quick here at the start, let you guys know. We occasionally do these kind of replay analysis videos, but not that often anymore. So if you want a replay analysis, I've been getting a lot of questions on it lately. Try to drop by one of my streams on Wednesday at Twitch. I'll leave a link, you know, wherever. Uh, sometimes I play a couple games, but usually I spend hours doing free replay analysis giveaways. So that's your best chance to get one from me. Uh, I know you can't always make it to the stream, so feel free to leave comments here on YouTube, message me other places, Discord, but it's kind of random if I ever get to those, so it's not very guaranteed. So the stream is the best way. So with that out of the way, let's hop into this, see what we get. How can I help you win? Uh, Hoodwing 5, not the most meta position 5, but it's a pub game. It's fine. She's she's playable. Uh, she's not like, you know, some grief pick. Uh, I don't know if I would start win lace. Not that I know who's in your lane yet, but I'm guessing Wraith King or CK is the core. And then you've got Venomancer or Warlock. So I don't think you really need the move speed here. I think it's going to sound funny. You need to keep your positioning very safe. And so that's why the win lace kind of makes sense. But ideally... You're gonna mostly just be poking the melee core for free, and I don't know if you really need the win lace. It's, it's okay. Uh, you might want uh, more stats, but uh, that's like all I'll say on that. So let's get into it. Life stealer lane versus a melee core should be okay, but he might get a lot of harass from the ranged heroes. So you may need to, uh, you may need to get a extra tango salve stuff like that to heal him up more than you. Your goal here, okay, so I see CK, so a couple things here already right off the bat. Unblocking this camp, totally fine. You didn't really do it though. So you like, you came out here to ward first, then you came here to put the sentry. But earlier you were just like wandering around doing nothing. So if you do this first, it will save you time because as soon as the lane meets, you can start doing things, but not if you have to ward, not if you have to sentry and stuff. So you put this sentry, but uh, you know, their sentry could have been somewhere here, could have been somewhere here, I don't know, and neither do you. So if he happens to wander over here, he might just kill your sentry by chance, and that would be sad. So if you're going to do this, we need to do it a little earlier, such as, like, get this bounty rune, walk over here, creeps are still, like, back here. So then you have time to put the sentry down and, like, take a quick look. Uh, you kind of need to, like, commit one way or the other. Uh, and a lot of times people get to the lane late and then still do this and so like the entire first wave dies and they're still just like wandering in the jungle before they get here you're not going to be one of those people you are here but you did it by kind of not actually finishing checking the whole box so that's kind of like the funny part uh from here we're not going to care too much about venomancer try to focus your attention on chaos knight just poke him when you can't poke him and venomancer walks up feel free to hit him too you have the longest range in the game or in this lane, so you should get a lot of free hits off. That's why I was saying, like, maybe we don't need the wind lace, just more stats, possibly even a Blightstone if you want. Looks like you're thinking about blocking that camp. You're going to let it spawn. I think that's a good call because your lane is pushing, so you can go for a pull. You see, like, all this, you're just, like, skittering around over here. What is this doing? It's not doing anything, right? I, I think you're, like, hesitant because you're like, oh, I can't miss the pull time, so I got to be over here. Like, oh, I don't want to miss it. I'm going to go. I'm going to forget. It's true. It's easy to get caught up in what you're doing and forget, but that is part of improving. So those last 10 seconds could have been up here harassing these guys. And then, okay, 109, I got to like run over here, do a small pull. Or uh, if you want to do a hard pull, you can stay up here longer because you can just keep an eye on these creeps when, you know, let's just take a look at when it gets there. Uh, right around now, potentially, if these creeps are still alive, holding their lane up, you hit this camp, you start pulling it in this way, now you do a connected pull. That means the whole time you got to be in the lane and still do a pull that will help fix your equilibrium. So far, I don't know, yeah, you've dilly-dallied here and then like put a sentry down on the hard camp, which has already spawned, so you know, it's kind of late for that. Uh, not that it won't block future pulls, but... You know, we could have we could have done other stuff. We could have done could have done more. All right, back into the lane. When you're actually in the lane, I do see you poking. You're not getting hit very much. That's all great. Now we're going for more denies. Up here, I part of me wants you to like come up here and get this XP. Like one creep died, and neither of you were in there, so you could have at least gotten some of the XP. It is a little dangerous. CK Venomancer could be very, you know, kill combo, but maybe if you like hug the trees, if you see Venomancer over here, you're like over here getting free XP. It's not like Life Stealer needs you. And then like here, same deal, right? I don't want to miss the pull, so I'm going to hang out over here. I'm glad you're thinking about the pull. I'm glad you're getting it, but you got more time. You can still do things. So for example, 
let's say like go back five seconds you could still have been like in this area poking going for some denies i saw creeps pretty low and then okay 226 step over here i got long range hit this camp drag it this way and then that's the pull connected with this one so you're spending some extra seconds oh you're a few seconds early this probably won't connect now uh maybe maybe oh okay i'm wrong nice 23 seconds worked excellent but still you get you get what i'm saying right there was time there where uh you could have done other stuff you could probably go for a kill here you see that one creep getting low so that would be a really good time to throw out bushwhack i don't care that you steal the last hit whatever right uh we're securing the last hit and it's going to catch him off guard because you could wait for it to die and throw out the stun then uh, but he was, you know, he's kind of playing here going for the deny. He shouldn't be. Uh, we kind of catch him off guard by going a little early with that, right? So easy stun into the blood grenade, into the acorn shot. You got three creeps on him and life stealer. This is probably a CK kill right here, or at least a very good trade. Kind of wait on it. I think you don't realize it's a good opportunity until, you know, too late. So now you're going to go on the Venomancer. And he's also kind of out of position, but he didn't have the three creeps right on top of him. So the CK would have been better. Uh, this is also going to be a good trade, but I think just not a kill either way. And I think the CK is probably definitely a kill. Venomancer, maybe. You kind of overlap. You didn't really need to use Acorn Shot to land that stun because he was in the trees. So just stun first, use the slow after that. Uh, that probably would have been a little better. Ooh, then this. This is a bad observer ward. This is not your observer. You have one right here. You chose to place it here. Looks like the off lane took the other one at the start, so mid doesn't have a ward. Maybe mid didn't want a ward at the start. That's fine. That's up to them. But the follow-up ward should be theirs, because why do you need to see this? You know, let me show you. Why do you need to see this and this? You are over committing way too much in one part of the map. And now mid has to blindly guess for runes. Mid can't see rotations possibly coming. Well, maybe she can because you're like, I can see that Venomancer no matter where he is. But you should be able to sort of infer it based off one observer. That's why you got to be careful where you put your one observer. You don't need to back to back when both are. Uh, this one's still got over half its duration. So you're really hurting mid here, which means the next observer really needs to go mid, which means now top is not going to have an observer. But if you balance this all out better, then the spread of observers can be better for your team. Zach, my cores never buy observers. Then buy it and go place it somewhere correct. This is not correct. Oh, and by the way, off that kill attempt, you know, maybe a successful kill or not, depending if we had executed differently. And we should grab this Lotus. This Lotus is, you can think of it like 150 gold to 200 gold because a mango is 65, a fairy fire is 65, but this thing th heals 125 health and mana. So I think of it like 200 gold. That's like a full creep wave and you got to remember to go for it because that's a that's a good chunk of money you can get other kills off of it you can survive kills make them waste time things like that it's just uh it's good to get i know it's hard to keep track of all the times it seems like you're pretty on top of pulls uh like you're looking at the clock a lot and thinking about pulls to do so that's good let's start thinking about other things now then so think about the lotus times think about uh good kill opportunities when you see creep equilibrium on top of heroes oh only one creep's about to die that's a good opportunity because the creeps are going to look for a new target that's going to be him so i'm going to stun slow him that's a lot of free damage for us uh your pulls seem to be good so far for your for your rank so i'm not uh, I'm not going to be worried about that. Looks like you guys are going to pick up a kill here. Venomancer chased too far. And then CK is chasing pretty far. It's kind of fine if you die at this point. But are, are we missing last hits? Oh, this could be... Okay, great. You can go home right now, I think. So actually, CK TP to lane, which is actually... I'm kind of impressed by. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's good or not. But uh, a lot of times, people will just panic TP home, myself included. And so you would have had a lot of time to know that bottom is safe because Venomancer's dead and CK has to walk all the way back. He TP'd here. So he'll actually be in the lane right away, essentially. But he does have to spend time healing. He doesn't have a salve on him. Life stealer's full health. So you should be good to go to leave him alone. Plus, if I look at the creepy equilibrium, they're all right here. And that means the next wave, you know, coming in as well. These waves, uh, they're also supposed to meet here. So Life is actually going to have an abundance of creeps by his tower. So now is a great time to run home because you got nothing. You could tango up to be full health, but you're not going to have any mana. You got no stick charges. So if you actually want to run home right there, you even have the windlace to make it a little faster. I think that'd be okay. You're going to buy regen, which is um, if you already have it, then that's a reason to stay. But this whole time, like while you're waiting for that mango, if anything happens, you really can't do much because you you pretty much have nothing. So if you went home and had full resources, you're also not really losing anything because Life Stealer 
I, he actually should be here. He should have handled this a little better. But uh, he should have been okay on his own. You had to eat that mango. So now you're good here, but it did cost you 65 gold. Which, going back, if you had remembered to grab this, then maybe we don't have to go to Fountain. We could have stayed here because if anything does happen, we can pop that Lotus and have everything we need. It is seven minutes. You could go try to steal their rune. There was just a fight down here. You could go for that. I see you've placed another Observer down here. So... It it, it, it is frequently the support's job to buy observers and place them, but you can't just place them wherever you want and it's extremely convenient to you. You need to leave and go place them in other useful places, and you don't need to place them instantly. So, like, I don't know. Maybe you place this because a fight was happening, and I kind of get that, but you already still have this observer to see it. So now that you've taken the next, next observer that we talked about earlier, that means look at the rest of your map. Right? We see a lot down here, and everyone else has to play blind. And is Lifestealer even the guy who's like, oh no, we can't let Lifestealer die. He's not a survivable carry. He's a very survivable carry. Uh, actually, he's he's not the, he's not doing... Uh, he's level 4. I guess that's okay. He, he could be you know maybe a little better if we got that kill earlier and stuff. But like he's not the guy that needs this amount of vision. So you're, you're making the rest of the lanes very difficult by placing observers like this. Ooh, rotation over. That's good. We could maybe look for some earlier, but honestly, I myself was also not really uh, taking a look for you, so... Ah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. It's good to think about this stuff. They won't always work out. Looks like Death Prophet was actually on her way here as well at the same time. Maybe we would have known that if we had an observer somewhere else on the map, but without that information, it was a, it was a good attempt. I'm glad you tried it. But, you know, with that observer, maybe next time you know, oh, it's not a good idea, Death Prophet's here, and now two of your heroes don't die. Okay, this is a bad pull. It's bad because it's useless. It's 10 minutes, Lifestealer can do it on his own, you're not needed down here anymore. So if you continue to play down here, you're just wasting your time, you're slowing down Lifestealer. You should go play with other people and make things happen to draw attention away from Lifestealer, who admittedly does not have his ult right now, so he can't heal easily. And uh, he is a little low, so it's you know it's a little dicey. But uh, generally speaking, right now we don't really want to keep playing with Life Stealer because you're actually just drawing more attention to him, and people are you know they're gonna come and get him killed because he's low. But if you force things to happen somewhere else, then he's gonna get more time on his own. He could have done this pull on his own. He was literally right there, you know. And then watch, he's gonna go farm this. I mean, because you're down here, because stuff happened, sure. Do this pull, leave. Go to Wingate, go somewhere else. You, second, another thing you need to, I don't know if it's second or third or fourth or how, what, or whatever we're at, right? You need to identify when is my carry okay on his own and now I can leave. So earlier we saw, you know, CK teleported out, you killed Venomancer and then you still chose to stay in the lane even though you weren't needed at all. You could have gone home at that time. Now you are full resource, full topped up. We do want to hit six, but it's not really through stealing Lifestealer's XP. That's not really... Sometimes it depends if you're close, but you're not. Uh, I don't know. You're kind of close, but it would still take you like a minute down here splitting XP with Life Stealer. So let's go somewhere else. Let's uh, you know take a look mid. Nah, maybe not there. You know, how about top tiny? You know, he's a pretty good hero to play with. He's your off lane. So how about you go with him? You got a quap smoke play. Any kill will probably get you the XP pretty close to six. You know, uh, you're just kind of here sharing with Life Stealer. So you're slowly getting there and you're actually slowing him down. All right, so I don't know what Life Stealer's doing. He's walking up here, right? But at the same time, we see Death Prophet coming in again. Maybe an observer somewhere in this area would help see that. But uh, your team's actually all gonna rotate down here to help take this fight. This is okay every now and then. If it's happening all the time, it's too much. So like this one, one team fight, sure. But let me show you what's happening on the rest of the map, which is that nothing's happening on the rest of the map. So this Warlock apparently is the one farming the lane. I don't know. But this Wraith King here, he's free to do whatever he wants, which is why if this happens once, sort of okay. But if it keeps happening because you keep being down here and you're not doing other stuff, so they keep coming down here and you guys are like, we keep winning fights down here. But the Wraith King is just free to farm or whatever carry is up here farming no bothers, no cares in the world. Warlock should probably be down there or at least pushing mid, I don't know. But, uh, you know, that's the problem. So here's here's one time. Okay, let's see if it happens anymore. See, like, look at this. You guys won that bottom fight, didn't get a tower. Wraith King, taking a tower. On his own, max farming, threatening towers. Forcing out Glyph. Okay, now he's gone, he doesn't care. Maybe they'll still get the tower. Get him, boys, get him. Help me prove my point. Hit that tower, yeah. 
Close, close, close. Uh, but you see, he's freely farming. Lifestealer split everything here one or uh, one out of five, right? Does that seem like a good trade if we do it too often? No, but one time fight, okay. Okay, I feel like you're down here out of feeling a sense of obligation maybe, but you can't actually do anything unless your team's gonna join and fight. And I don't know if your team wants to. So it would have been better to already be in position in other places, pushing those out. Yeah, like, you know, they just took a tower and Quap managed to take mid, so that's good. Um, but you can trade towers at the start, especially when they're a very push-oriented lineup with strong ults like Death Prophet, Phantomancer Ward, you got Warlock, all stuff like that, right? And early team fight's pretty dicey for you all. So if they're all grouping to take a tower, just let them do it and you go take another tower. And that way you're not really falling behind, but you're not taking these bad team fights you don't want to take. In that case, you didn't take a team fight, but you just weren't really ready pushing on the other half of the map. So it ended up... Uh, you know, they've got all the towers, you have one tower. This is the first time I see you up here making a proactive play with your team. Oh, okay, no, no, wait, wait. You did come through the Twin Gate. So that was that was one proactive play at around, I think, eight minutes. And here's the second one. All the others, I feel, have been pretty reactive of like, I'm down here, they come to me. Sometimes I like move a little bit. But I, I feel like so far, most of the game, you've just been down here far more than you needed to. And this, this kind of thing should start earlier. So that's a really good place to, to think about. It goes back to identifying that Lifestealer was fine on his own a really long time ago. But you kept playing there. Um, so this Observer is kind of okay. I think, like, further back's a little better, but uh, I'm not going to nitpick it. You're placing an Observer to help you take this tower, so I'm okay with it. This Sentry, you're not actually walking up there. If they had an Observer, you wouldn't even know. So... That's like a half-assed sentry. It's not a bad place to check, but you didn't check it. You just put the sentry down. There could be an observer right here. There could be a sentry here to know that you did all this. And they're like, oh, they didn't kill our observer. That's weird. It is weird. Like, if you're going to do this, then walk up here. All right, look at this. Let's, let's, I don't even know how this fight's going to play out. Lifestealer, farming free. On his own, no cares. If everyone's top... Maybe he'll take this tower, or maybe he'll just continue farming whatever he wants to farm. No splitting XP, no one's near him, great. Carry enemy Wraith King. If he wins this fight, he's going to get kill gold, assist gold, stuff like that, right? But any farm up here is being split with everyone. The creep waves, but then after this winning fight, right, everyone's going to scatter, and that means, like, DP, you think DP's just walking away? No, she's like, oh, this camp's mine, this camp's mine, other people who shut up, oh, I want this camp. You know, Wraith King, his farm is getting cut down. Let's see, let's see how the fight actually goes, because I'm actually quite happy you took a fight up here rather than in your own base. So far, we've killed Wraith King, or we took his ult, we got a Warlock. Tiny died, unfortunate. All right, this is a relatively even trade. So the fight itself... Oh, wait! Relatively good trade. So, a pretty good fight for us. We got Wraith King ult, we got two kills. Tiny died, I'm sorry, Tiny, but sacrifices must be made for the team. And Lifestealer, he's just going away at it. This is a much better sequence of events for you and your team. Earlier, we saw the opposite. The enemy team coming down here, Wraith King being left alone, right? That was good for them. You want to be on the side that actually makes this happen, and it's not just by coincidence. Of course, I can't see your team comm, so maybe you did plan this out, but I'm telling you, you could have planned it out earlier. So that first time where it happened to you all, instead of engaging in that, maybe you all are the first people to come up here. You have a smoke with Queen of Pain, something like that, and you guys force the fights up here, and then you do this one as well, which means now two sequences have gone heavily in your team's favor, where you guys are taking fights you want to take, Lifestealers being left alone for so long. Now I'd say it's like kind of even, because they did it once, you did it once. Um, you know, depending how each particular event went, maybe it goes one way or the other, but both sides got their play. I don't want that. I, I don't want fair play in my Dota games that I'm trying to win. I want it all my way. And uh, as soon as you can start winning your lane, you can start trying to do that. You you place the observers, you get the smokes you need, make sure you have the regen so you're healthy enough to go, all of that stuff, and you try to be the one to coordinate the play. Now, of course, your team won't always listen, but as a support, you simply walk to this lane. Like, what are they going to do? 
I don't want to make a play. I am here. Like I'm making the play. You guys aren't doing shit. I'm going to I'm going to stun when they walk up. I am orchestrating it. I don't need your cooperation. Your your carry complains. I know that's what you guys are telling me. Oh, my carry complains when I leave. TP down here if, if it's needed. Oh, he always dies while I'm gone. I don't know. We can't we can't you can't massively change the correct way to play just because someone else is bad. The best you can do is explain like just be safe. I'm I'm gone for a bit. I will TP back. If they keep feeding, they would have fed later. Like even if they listened to you correctly now, later they would have made bad decisions. You were destined for questionable stuff. But anyone who is like moderate to good, they'll understand if you explain it and it'll go your way. I know you many of you aren't satisfied with that, but I don't know. You can adjust a little bit to your teammates, but you can't play like shit because of them, right? You still have to try to make the right choices. And continuing to babysit a life stealer or any carry who does not need to be babysat, that's not going to build good habits for us. So we're just going to also become a bad player along with them. It's better to lose a game, but build good habits so that next time your good habits will hopefully be matched with someone who's better than your last carry. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because I think we've already identified several things to work on. I think that's a you know a good end point. I do this at the replay streams as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna list out a couple things for you. I think uh, the the main thing, actually one separate issue is warding. So I'm gonna highlight warding first. Yeah, you can't do this shit. I I don't want to see so many observer wards all in the same spot, back to back to back to back, uh, the rest of the map blind. That's not good. It's going to make it very difficult for the rest of your team to do stuff. Two, um, work on identifying when your carry is safe to leave on their own, because that is connected to uh, a lot of the other issues you were having which is that because you keep sitting down here, either because you're not thinking about it or because you feel like, oh, I, I'm a support, I gotta keep helping my carry, you're, you're taking it too far and you're not doing anything else. So uh, you're actually having negative impact once Lifestealer, like it's good up to the point that Lifestealer needs you and then af everything after that, it's negative because you're just, you're slowing him down by absorbing half of his XP and half of his gold. Well, you're not getting last hits as much, but like, you know what I mean, right? It, it's not great. So once you can identify that point and for every carry and every matchup, it's different, but try to understand that point and also understand that although you might return to the lane, there are moments you can leave like 30 second periods, right? He's not quite at the point. I'm going to completely abandon him, but the lane is right here. They're dead, right? I have time. I can do something else. Sometimes, like, that's just running home to get more region and coming right back because of, you know, I happen to be chased here by a CK and I'm very low. Sure. Other times, oh, we get a kill here. I'm relatively healthy. It's four minutes. I'm going to run over here for the water rune. Or I'm going to stack because there's no rune timing. Or, oh, it's close to seven minutes, so I'm going to sneak over this way. Oh, it's, it's lotus time. Oh, I'm going to take a look at the twin gate, right? Tons of opportunities nowadays, but... You got to be thinking about it. You got to be ready for it. And if your default is babysit the carry, just keep doing pulls, right? Then you're going to miss out on a lot of that. And whoever takes initiative, that's always a huge advantage in pub games. So I think that's really important. That's kind of like the key theme here. And I hope you guys find that helpful. Again, if you want something like this uh, for yourself, I will randomly check comments and sometimes do them. But the best way really is through the stream. So please join there if you can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.